call the public hearing to order. It's public hearing number one on the uh, municipal plan. Notice is hereby given to the residents of the city of Newport that the Newport City Council will hold two public hearings in the Newport City Council room on Monday, September 19th at 6.30 p.m. and Monday, October 17th at 6.30 p.m. The hearing will be held for public review and comment on a proposed amendment of the Newport City Municipal Plan pursuant to Title 24 of VSA Chapter 117. The purpose of the proposed municipal plan is to establish a coordinated and comprehensive planning process to guide decisions made by the city. The proposed plan, if and when adopted, will affect all lands within the city of Newport. And this was dated August 17, 2022, Newport City Council, and it appeared on, in the newspaper on that date, in the Newport Daily Express. And with that, um, I know you want to have slides, and I'll, chair, I'll turn it over to uh, the chair of the Planning Commission, John Minette, and um, he's going to coordinate with the city manager on a slide presentation. There is no one else connected remotely. It's just just the city manager. <clears throat> the slides are basically the slides that we used um, in June at the city summit. We obviously can update somewhat from from where we were at that point in time. Uh, but the. Uh, So as indicated, um, this, this plan is really the first um, rewrite from scratch in some 20 odd years as opposed to cut and paste um, updates of prior versions of the plan. Unlike prior plans, um, there's a new state statutory framework that, that says that the plan is, is intended to be in effect for up to eight years as opposed to the, the former rules for the last 30 or 40 years, which were up to five years. The um, general framework for the new plan was developed through um, a combination of a, quite a few planning commission meetings over the last two or three years. Um, input from um, a consultant that was hired, uh, the SE group, and a couple of public surveys um, that were undertaken as well as, as going back through um, other planning efforts that have been made over the last few years. One of the things that we tried to do was make an effort to build upon a lot of the work that's been done in prior uh, more limited studies and plans, such as the downtown study, the waterfront <coughs> study, and so forth. Um, rather than reinventing the wheel in that sense, we were trying to build upon a lot of the, the work that's already been done. <coughs> so this, this slide essentially illustrates the, the structure of the, of the plan um, in, in terms of work from a general vision statement down to eight primary elements um, and then uh, working our way down to objectives and actions within each of the Eight, each of the eight primary elements. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do was to try to suggest objectives and actions um, in, in each of the categories. Um, we felt that those points were lacking in some, some of the prior plans and that some of the prior plans seemed to be more backward looking than forward looking. And, um, and the point of the exercise is to look forward, not backwards. So this, this, this is um, a visual depiction, if you will, of the, of the eight elements that uh, represent essentially the eight chapters into which the plan is, is divided. And um, um, their downtown connectivity, development, leisure, environmental stewardship, vibrancy, regional connectivity, community, and housing. And then each element is developed in This simply illustrates some of the uh, 
principles that we were focused on um, in looking at each of the elements of the plan um, in, in terms of underlying principles. The surveys that were done indicated that the number one concern of folks in, in, in the city who responded is essentially quality and availability of housing. And the focus was not limited to affordable housing or low-income housing. The study or, or the, the comments really were directed at all forms of housing, short of what you might characterize as luxury housing or seven-figure housing. That seemed to be the only category people weren't concerned about. Um, but. But the responses, and this is consistent with some other surveys that I'm familiar with in the general area, that, that housing across essentially the, the spectrum from affordable to housing for blue collar working folks to housing for working professionals, teachers, nurses, police officers, etc. The housing issue affects all, all categories. So that that, uh, in turn, is, is going to drive the way that we look at the bylaw when we get to that. Um, and that's consistent, actually, with efforts that the, the state wants municipalities to make in terms of um, uh, looking at impediments to the development of housing. So we can go ahead. Um, this, this summarizes some of the points that were discussed when we, we dealt with the stewardship issue. Uh, they're all pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, climate refugees is, is up there in large part because there is anecdotal evidence uh, from, from realtors and other people tuned in to folks moving into the area that there are actually already people moving here to try to beat climate change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, I'm personally familiar with some people who moved from places that were either on fire or running out of water, and there, there is a lot of other anecdotal evidence in that regard. And there are some people who think that we've seen only the tip of the iceberg in that regard, so to speak, in the sense that if you look at the country and the big picture, what parts of the country have fresh water? reasonable amounts of fresh water in the form of lakes, streams, ponds, etc. You know, and if there aren't that many places that seem to have an abundance. Um, so in any, in any event, um, um, one of the other uh, concepts that was discussed was the notion that perhaps um, uh, Newport should follow in the footsteps of other municipalities and look at energy efficiency issues and the way that a lot of places do that is through an energy committee. I frankly don't know much about them, but I know that um, there are folks here who do. Um, one of the other categories for in which the new plan is broken down into is regional connectivity. And um, anybody who drives east-west knows that there are only two or three ways to get across Orleans County east to west, and the, the major one runs right through here, uh, through Railroad Square, um, as, as an example. Um, the city is also, as indicated, a, you know, a hub for the region in a lot of other respects, ranging from employment to health care. speed internet from a virtual perspective compared to a lot of other places. And this section really picks up on um, the work that's been done with other projects such as the uh, downtown plan and the water, waterfront plan and the AARP plan um, in, in terms of continuing to 
to look at ways of, as indicated, improving circulation. The leisure, leisure part, I think, is also fairly self-explanatory as well. Um, if you compare Newport City to a lot of other places, Newport City really has a fairly remarkable range of outdoor leisure activities and out, outdoor access. Um, you know, some of the items are illustrated in the slide. You know, we're all familiar with those. <coughs> and again, tying into the, the downtown uh, plan and some of the other work that's been done along those lines um, you know, with, with the goal of Continuing to rejuvenate the downtown area, enhance, enhance, and build upon what's already here. So that's that's the um, thumbnail sketch, if you will. I don't know if there are any questions. Um, actually, at this time, we'll open it up to public comment or questions on the plan. Um, before we do that, I just. I want to commend the Planning Commission um, for all the work they have put into this. Commend uh, Allison Lowe from NBDA. Um, now, the steps are two public hearings, council approval, and then it has to go to the NBDA region. If you want to give maybe a brief sure. process of you know the steps. Sure. Um, there's two hearings at the city council level. <coughs> And then at your next regularly scheduled meeting, you can vote um, to adopt the plan. And you would then request regional approval. Um, regional approval is not required, but you've always sought it out because it allows you to continue to participate in things like downtown designation and uh, a, apply for municipal planning grants. So. We've already done a staff review, and um, the staff review going into regional approval just determines if the plan is complete. I didn't do it, somebody else did it, because I was too close to the work. Right. <laughs> um, so we would have a hearing and in, in your city um, after you've adopted it, and then we would go to our full board um, at their next meeting, uh, which would be sometime in December, and we would request the board um, fully approve the plan. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. The other thing I should point out, and this slide reminded me, is that in, in the process of working on the, the plan, we solicited input from a lot of other organizations in the area, and that list covers um, a number of the, the primary ones that contributed to the effort by educating us on their activities and um, projects that they, they have underway. And the towns of St. Johnsbury and Montpelier were involved basically discussing some downtown issues and transportation issues. They shared some of their experiences and recent efforts, uh, efforts with us so that we could have the benefit of, of what they had done. Questions from the public or comments? Because I'm opening it up. I guess I'll, well, I'll let Chris go since he had his hand up first. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could somebody explain what the master plan does? What's the point of it? And do, is this unique to Vermont? Or does every place have this? I can't tell you if it's unique to Vermont or not. I'm sure that every, well, I'm sure that many places have some sort of plan. In a lot of areas, counties do a lot more than is the case in Vermont. Vermont is unique in the sense that counties do almost nothing compared to other states. Um, in most other states, a significant amount of what we would consider to be local governance is actually handled at the county level. Um, but, in, but in terms of the plan, um, um, I'm sure Allison can explain the consequences of not having a plan far better than than I can, but my general impression is that is that municipalities in Vermont are required to have plans that address at least some uh, 
basic points. Um, and that's true whether or not they have zoning, whether or not they have floodplain zoning, you know, uh, in any of those efforts. They still have to have a plan in place in order to be eligible for some basic state assistance in a number of areas. Um, you know, with, without a plan, the town is really crippling itself. And downtown does it requires a plan as a predicate. Uh, just a question on the technicality. It's a great, I think it's a great plan. I did not read all of it, probably only 80%. Um, but you have used a term, Lake Memphis Magog Watershed, in your introduction to the watershed. And the lake should be deleted from that. It's just, and every other time you mention it, it's fine. It's only at the point you say the size of the watershed. So well, I don't know sense. whether that's that's really a sort of minor, minor technicality, but I don't know what that ends up doing. So it's essentially a typo. It's, it is, yeah, it's an inclusion that's wrong. It's on page uh, 40, flood resilience. It says it's entirely within the Lake Mount Magog watershed at the end of the first sentence. Every other time you mention that the Magog watershed, you're correct. Disclosure, oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm on the board for Mount Magog Watershed Association. Yeah, so. I see it. It's, it's actually yeah. page 41 on my copy. Oh, okay. Um, it's the last word on the first line under flood results. Yeah. yeah. No, I see your point because the 687 square miles of watershed clearly is bigger than the lake itself. Yeah, it was it was sort of very strange, but the proper name. You did it correct every other time I ran into it, yeah. except for W at the uh, capitalizing the watershed at one point. But I think that's very good when you think of the typos that you could make <laughs> and the mistakes. There's a lot of information. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a follow-up clarifying question on Mr. Roy's question? Um, he referenced the master plan, but this is that's a separate document, is it not? And how does this plan work with the master plan? The, we have a downtown master plan yeah. that's focusing on downtown. This focuses on the entire city. This, this is a city-wide plan, and I, I don't know that the term master plan really exists in the context of town plan. I would actually think that this would be the master plan because it's citywide. Go ahead, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, really, what is the heat squad? It's, it's an energy efficiency organization uh, that provides uh, services to help people improve the um, efficiency of their homes or businesses. Oh, okay. I'm on now. It's okay. kind of like the geek squad for technology. This is the heat for Everybody efficiency. <laughs> other questions? I'm going to go back to you, Chris. I want to let other people have a chance. Hi, I am. I read the plan. Thank you. Um, I read the plan. It was, it's a great plan. It's a significant piece of work. And I do have a couple questions about the appendices. Um, appendices B about the wastewater treatment. I think there's some, maybe things have changed since this was drafted, but I think there are some, some things that are no longer true. Um, when you talk about leachate, and um, it, it talks about how leachate is not toxic, and that if it were toxic, the Montpelier wastewater treatment plant wouldn't be accepting it. Well, the Montpelier <coughs> wastewater treatment plant is no longer accepting it. So, um, there are many scientific documents that talk about the toxicity of leachate. I can provide some sources if you'd like, but I just feel like that was misleading to state it in the way they did. And the numbers where they're talking about PFAS are actually wrong exponentially. Um, it says that the leachate contains 3,000 to 4,000 parts per trillion of PFAS. And it says that the Vermont drinking water standard is 20,000 billion parts, parts per billion. But really, the Vermont water standard is 20 parts per trillion. 
which would be 0 0.020 parts per billion. So it's, it's misleading in that it makes it sound like leachate is not bad, like it's not a bad thing, but we know in fact it, it is a bad thing. It has a lot of PFAS in it, and it has a lot of contaminants in it. And I feel that that area needs to be accurately depicted. Right now it is actually factually wrong. Okay, well, I suggest that you send the zoning, or if you can send the zoning administrator the information so we can take a look at it. I'd be happy to do that. Who would I send that to? I'm right here. Frank. Frank? Yeah. I think I might need more. I'll look it up. Can you make your email is on the city website? Zoning administrator. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Just in general about that area, um, I think that's it's either Appendix B or C. Um, I'm concerned that um, that that section is almost an advertisement um, for Casella. To what extent should our city be talking about what Casella is doing in Coventry, another another town? Um, with respect to what what it's doing, uh, the benefits of what it's doing, um, you know, I s sort of you wonder who wrote that uh, the leachate is not considered toxic. Who got the twenty parts per trillion um, standard uh, wrong? I'd like to know if you're going to add all this stuff about Casella. How much money is in that bond um, that if they go bankrupt? is going to take care of the problems. We know right now that um, they've got a leak uh, to worry about. Um, and um, the, the fact that there's approval from the state as to what chemicals uh, or what trash is coming from out of state, um, and, and that article suggests that um, Everything is okay that comes from out of state. But if you ask Casella specifically, and we have on occasion um, when they've been available to talk about things, um, whether how much they inspect the garbage that's coming in to, um, to the dump, um, they're not opening plastic bags in a significant way and finding out what's coming from out of state. Um, so, all I'm asking you to do is also consider how much of Casellanus should be in our plan, and and you know certainly what our waste management area does and what our water treatment plant does, and all of that stuff is in the plan. But it seems to me you've gone really outside of the plan, outside of Newport, with respect to. Um, the emphasis on Casella. Many plans look at significant impacts uh, upon the community that come from external sources in the form of neighboring communities. Obviously, water flows north if they're, they're from, in, in reality, in the Mimagog watershed. If there is, in fact, a significant problem at Casella at some point. I'm sorry? I said if, in fact, there is a significant problem at Casella at some point, this, the city is certainly going to um, bear some of the consequences of that. Uh, I mean, we certainly can take, take, take a look at the, this from the factual accuracy point of view and but, but clean this, it up. Oh, I'm sorry. I said we'll take a look at it. Yeah, it seems like a, almost a, what, the term a greenwash of some of the, it's, it highlights the things that look good, but it doesn't mention some of the things that don't look so good about, you know, for instance, the trucks that come in and, and uh, the damage to roads and all sorts of other things, that kind of an impact <coughs> is missing in this um, section. But the, but the impact of the roads don't affect Newport City directly because they don't go over Newport City roads. Well, we should be we No, but I'm just saying that, you know, if you met you use the analogy of impacting roads, am I correct? The trucks basically 
they don't go through the city of Newport as far as the big the big trucks coming in. Yeah, but if we're talking about the general impact of what is happening there, I mean, if you're willing to put one in, put the other in, and if maybe you shouldn't put as much in, or maybe you should describe some of the problems that we could have. Well, we'll leave that up to the Planning Commission to make that decision before it comes back to the council. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I want to give everyone a first chance. Just for the information too, I forgot I was remiss, but it, one thing different this year in the work of, of, of doing the plan is they were putting the draft sections online as they were doing it, which I found helpful because I was reading it as they were updating sections and I found that very helpful. So I thought that was a good, a good thing this year when they did the plan. Um, so we'll go back to questions. I just wanted to comment on what Ann has said. Um, in that appendix on solid waste, they talk about a 520,000 tank that's going to be used to hold leachate for a pilot treatment. Again, I'm not sure why that's in the plan. She makes a very good point. But 520,000 gallons of leachate sitting in the Medframagog watershed is a huge environmental risk. Just in May of 2021, Bethlehem, New Hampshire had 154,000 gallons of leachate leak. And we are putting our community at risk by allowing 520,000 tank of leachate to sit there. I, I just, I don't know why that's in there either. It makes me look at it and say, oh my gosh, you know? Well, one reality is that even if you close the landfill tomorrow, the leachate is still there. Right, but we don't need to collect it in another big tank for a pilot program that's not even permitted yet, which it just blows my mind, actually. Well, that's a state of Vermont decision, not a city of Newport decision. That's, no, it, I mean, when it comes to the decisions, we have input into the decision. Right. But what I'm saying is it comes down to the state of Vermont saying yay to the, two, the 520 or no to the 520. Right. See, I'm getting at it. It's not a city council decision. It's not a city of Newport decision. It's the state of Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, Department of Environmental um, conservation, all those departments. And so, you know, we have input, but we don't have a say when it comes down to the state regulatory decisions. They make the decision. We don't have any input. I mean, well, not input, we have input, but we don't have a vote. You know what I'm trying to say? It's true that we, we don't have a vote, but if we put that in a plan, as specifically as that, it looks as though we're signing off on it. and. We may want to be a little more careful about that. Okay. Other questions? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Just a little bit of housekeeping for myself. Um, how old is the current plan? It got an extension, right? Yeah, you did Allison, say that you before. Can, you, you adopted it for another eight years or something, but um, it was with the understanding that you were going to do a brand new plan. A brand new plan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what it boils down to is about a three year extension in reality. Yeah. So, yes. so Mr. May, the extension was received three years ago? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Your plan was going to expire. Yeah. And <coughs> it was generally understood that it, it didn't really fit your current reality anymore. It, um, so um, there is a provision in statute that allows you to do cursory updates to a plan, factual updates, um, and then just readopt the plan. Um, it was understood at the time that that was probably not really adequate for the long term. What you really needed was a new plan. It gave you time to put the time and effort into doing an entirely new plan that was more visionary and, and, and met your current needs. So uh, again, just so my, that's clear in my, in my head, when, how old is the current plan? Well, it was readopted in what, 2020? Okay. Yes. And they had made changes at that time. 
they, they moved, made changes at they that moved time. Five. They removed a whole bunch yeah. of things that were no longer valid. They they removed it, a lot. Of, there was a lot of background descriptions mm -hmm. of things, and all of those descriptions were updated. Updated. Things yeah. were. Yeah. Yeah. All the prior one was twenty fifteen. Pardon me. Was the prior one in twenty fifteen? It was yes, because yes. then under um, Vermont statute, plans were valid for five years. Okay. So it was in 2015, or adopted in 2015. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. With some updates in 2020 when it was readopted on an interim basis. Other questions? <clears throat> I guess for the record, ma'am, what was your name? My name is Teresa Duray. Okay. I live in Newport. Okay, just wanted to have it. Okay. Other comments, questions on it? Then with that, we'll close this first public hearing. And as I said, the next public hearing will be Monday, October 17th at 6.30 p.m. here in the council room. Can you say that again, Mr. Mayor? The next public hearing is Monday, October 17, 2022, 6.30 p.m. here. Uh, yes. If there are changes to the plan uh, based upon uh, comments that were made tonight, uh, can they be made available to us prior to the next hearing? Well, I'm sure the Planning Commission will have a public meeting to discuss it. And if they make changes, then it will be put on the website. You know, is this a live document? It's, it's a live website. document that yeah. can be when you make changes, it goes online. Or you can easily update it. Thank you. Did you have another question? The same question. Same question. No. Okay, just trying to. Kind of the same question, Mr. Mayor. So, if the city council is not happy with it, you send it back to the back to the planning commission. Is it back to square one for them? Do they have to have their public hearing again and come back and? No, the reason, the, the, the goal of the public hearings is to gather public input, make changes if they so choose, or update facts and things like that. I don't believe that the Planning Commission doesn't have to have another public hearing. This is taking the input from the public. But if, they, if you're not happy with, are they mandated to go by your direction, or they can, can they say? Oh no, the council has to approve it. Okay. The, the plan is always approved by the governing body, which is the city council. So if you're not happy, it goes back to them then. Do they have a deadline, 90 days or whatever? Or is, or is that something else? Allison? Not really. I mean, at some point, I think if uh, like six months have gone by, then you might want to restart the adoption process. But, okay. Um, so it can't linger forever? No, no, no. Okay. Anything else? And we'll move on. And at this time, at 7.05 p.m., I will call the Newport City Council meeting to order for Monday, September 17th, in the City Council room. All members of the Council are present, with the exception of uh, Melissa Pet Ms. Pedersen, who's absent. Others include James Johnson, Clerk Treasurer, and Laura Dogan, our City Manager. There are no comments by members of the public. And the next item is the RCD. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I skipped the minutes. I'm, I have notes on my thing, that's why. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, yes. The next item, the next item actually is to approve the minutes of September, September 12th, 2022. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Vashar. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Wilson. Discussion on the minutes? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. And there were no, um, no one had signed up for comments by members of the public. So then we'll move to item four, which is the RCDI grant conclusion report and NCIC contract for grant services. Um, we have Mike Welch, Senior Project Manager for NCIC, and Karen Garrity, Project Manager for NCIC.
Thank you. This is a very brief overview of um, the Rural Community Development Initiative grant uh, that is subtitled Creating a Vibrant Newport. This grant was applied for and on behalf of uh, the City of Newport by Northern Community Investment Corporation and um, was a three-year uh, USDA Rural Community Development Initial Grant Initiative grant. Um, <clears throat> So the activities of the grant itself were focused on five main goals. Goal one was to complete an implementable action plan of priorities based on community meetings, data from consultants and planning studies, including prioritized steps that will lead to physical improvements in the community. So again, working through a number of plans uh, that were in place and that continued to evolve. Um, uh, through the RCDI process, uh, a number of priorities were established. Goal number two uh, through the RCDI grant was to encourage and lead a viable construction project on the vacant Main Street properties. Goal number three is to develop a four-season outdoor recreational economy. Goal number four was to build the capacity of the Newport Downtown Development Organization. And goal number five was to support and attract businesses and entrepreneurs. So within these five goals, and there will be a final written report of all of this that we'll get into far more detail than just this brief presentation, um, but the the technical assistance, the training and technical assistance that was provided helped to um, um, establish activities and accomplishments within each goal area. So the $250,000 RCDI grant, which was a three-year grant, was leveraged into acquiring $1.7 million in additional funding to support these goals. Uh, so it was incredibly successful in garnering funding for the five goals. And again, just these are just very brief examples of, of what the, um, the grant selected funding for, but for example, in, in the Newport Municipal Plan, received funding uh, through the work of the RCDI grant. Um, the strategies that you saw within one of the goals for downtown development, the contracting with White and Burke, the real estate advisors, uh, payment for those services, for the development of their advice and planning, all comes through the RCDI grant. The Prouty Connector Path was one example for the outdoor recreation economy. Uh, so the construction of that was partially funded by a grant that came through the work of the RCDI grant. The Gardner Park Restoration Project uh, is a recipient of a number of grants that have come through the RCDI work. Building the capacity of the downtown organization through the work of the RCDI grant. The downtown organization has hired uh, staff, has worked with the board of directors, um, has looked at their strategic planning and worked with them on those and building internal capacity for the organization to carry downtown development forward. In addition to working on and building the website that you see before you. Uh, the RCDI grant has supported destination marketing for Newport. This is uh, the new logo and that has gone in to, uh, that was developed for Newport and there are a number of marketing initiatives underway around, for example, the um, outdoor recreation economy and the new trail system <coughs> that we have that are supported by the Rural Community Development Initiative grant. And then there are an array of infrastructure projects. Um, that you're seeing and will continue to see happening around the city. Um, the project on Main and Field Avenue that you see before you, this beautiful parklet that's outside our windows here today, um, part of the work and supported through the RCDI. There is work and grant money, there's work to be done and grant money acquired for the causeway intersection. And uh, the street lamps that you see are also part of uh, the RCDI grant um, support. Is that the last slide? 
that's the last slide. So I said it would be very brief. There will be a final report, a written report that comes out that gets submitted uh, to USDA. Um, but this just gives you an overview of things that you've perhaps been seeing happen around the city over the last few years. The grant was extended due to the COVID-19 pandemic um, issues that caused some delays in projects as well as shut down uh, some labor that was needed for some of the projects. There are some projects that are still to be completed and I'll have my colleague Mike speak to a little bit of that. Um, but it's been a hugely successful grant uh, for the city to support the growth of the city moving forward. And again, to just go back to that number of $250,000 for a three-year grant, leveraging $1.7 million uh, in grants that furthered the development of our community uh, moving forward in all areas, in marketing, infrastructure development, capacity building, and so forth. So, there are questions. I or Mike can help to answer them. Yeah, so the second part of the agenda item talked about a potential contract. Um, right now, we've been working for four years as a result of the extension that Karen just mentioned. Uh, just at the outset, I'd like to say it has been a pleasure working with people here on not only the City Council, but the Planning Board. Uh, on several of the presentations and grant applications that we made required planning commission approval. Uh, working with Laura and all the department heads, I think we've worked with almost every department in the city in terms of one program or another. So it really has been, uh, for me personally, I know for Karen, who's a resident of Newport, uh, has just been a phenomenal experience. And I thank you very much for your support of the RCDI grant initially. That $250,000 grant, the city actually matched that um, your match was through the form of the support that you've given to the downtown organization uh, to help support uh, the work that they've done in terms of marketing, promoting the downtown, uh, and managing the downtown program. Uh, and so the city matched that for a half a million dollar uh, appropriation over the last four years. Right now, that grant comes to an end in September. Um, as Karen mentioned, we've Several projects are done, but there are a lot of projects that are not done. Uh, and associated with all of those projects include grant reporting, compliance, requisitioning, uh, contracts, bid specifications. Uh, so there's still a lot of work that remains. Um, city staff uh, certainly have the capacity to handle uh, some of that work, but they're also uh, everybody has a lot of their regular departmental work on their plates as well. When you look at some of the responsibilities the department heads, the city manager has uh, just overseeing the city government. So what we've done in several communities is that we do contract for services to help with not only applying for grants, but also administering the projects. So right now we still have several projects that are outstanding. The Coventry Street uh, project was just awarded uh, downtown Transportation Improvement Grant, so that hasn't even started yet in terms of the design. The Causeway intersection, we've got two fairly large grants that have been approved by NBRC and USDA for that project. The engineering firm went out of business during COVID. We had a new engineering firm, or the firm that they went to, we just completed an agreement with them. Uh, and so now we're finalizing engineering on that project to be able to get that project up to bid next year or hopefully this fall. Um, we're still, the street lights are almost done. There's still a few more that need to be put in. We've got a grant that's gonna replace these, uh, the signage here downtown that was approved through the Agency of Transportation. So there's still several large projects. Uh, so Laura had asked uh, how we continue, how, how might we be able to continue to work with the city. Uh, unfortunately, NCIC is a nonprofit organization. We don't receive any direct appropriation from the state or the federal government. Uh, the way we stay in business is we contract for services. We uh, have investments through the form of loans to businesses, uh, or we write grants to help support our efforts. Uh, and those are few and far between these days. So a lot of our funds are coming through co contracts for services. So I had proposed an administrative agreement to Laura. Basically, we go through uh, beginning October 1st and end with your fiscal year. 
Um, and like I say, it would, it would be able to continue with grant writing services and administering the projects that are currently outstanding. Uh, so with that, I'll be quiet. I'll answer any questions that you may have, uh, and we'll go from there. like Walmart funds because yeah, that, that came to my mind is that's a yes. perfect use yes. for those funds because everything has been associated with downtown. Exactly. That was my recommendation. There's $350,000 left in the Walmart funds. We're expecting one more payment of 100000 in November that will complete the payments that SHI Holdings committed to the city. This, grant, this contract is for $30,000 a year would be my recommendation that those funds are in direct alignment. The, the uh, clincher, um, the purpose of those funds is to mitigate impacts that the project, which would be Walmart, might reason, reasonably be expected to cause in Newport. And uh, I can't think of a better way to mitigate impacts than having professional grant writers to continue to help the city transform from pre-EB-5 to post-EB-5, which is a continuation of what's written in the municipal and the new municipal plan, as well as continuing the efforts of the waterfront and downtown master plan. No, I think it's a great idea, yeah. really. Yeah. I really do. Their expertise speaks for itself. Oh with, my gosh, with, the, with, the, with the grants that we've been awarded, you know, their expertise is it's top-notch, in my opinion. It's um, been such a savings to the taxpayers. Uh, the fire department just got a grant for about $27,000 for new radios. That was a grant that they wrote. They wrote the grant for the municipal plan. They wrote the grant for the bylaw modernization. They've written grants uh, for our police department to get new equipment. It's affected every single department in the city. Does this, this will have an impact on the work currently be done by White and Burke? Uh, the real estate study of what can be done that over with the empty well, block that those funds um, are coming out of the current RCDI grant okay and then there's another batch of funds that's from the um, what did we call it um, the um, I think we called it the EB5 recovery funds that Governor Scott just awarded us right perhaps last month it was right. there was forty thousand dollars in there I um, remember he speaking with the governor he said we've got to come up with a good plan it made exactly. it sound like that's the only way you're going to get the receiver to budge. In reality, it's the only way to get the receiver to budge over there is to come up with a good plan. Right. And if my name is to me, or that Laura stated it exactly correct, is that as this grant runs out September 30th, our contract with White and Burke, as we talked about earlier, also runs out. The way we built the agreement was that White and Burke will continue to provide some services under the RCDI grant after that deadline. So we will finish up the contract with them. They still owe us some time that they are going to provide. And then following that, you would have some other resources available should you choose to continue to go about their work. Well, it's my roundabout way of saying that's another use, probably be a good another, another good use if we didn't have the funding of the Walmart funds, because that's impact, that's downtown. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's my thought process <coughs> with the whole thing. Um, Questions from council members on this? Um, before I take questions, we have there's a vote that we have to have. we have to have a motion and a second and a vote uh, not a vote but discussion. So, does the council wish to make a motion to enter into this contract with NCIC? to be effective October 1st through June 30th. And it's the amount not to exceed $30,000. Mr. Mayor, I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Charbonneau. Discussion from council members? Okay, Anne. Um, I don't doubt that this is um, a good idea. Um, I just wanted to know, how do you quantify um, $30,000 worth of work in terms of hours or in terms of the projects or, and will you write that up in some way so that we know where our, our 30,000 went? 
Yes, and the answer to that question is yes. And the way it's um, the way the contract is written is based on hours, and the, the rate it, um, between now and December 30th is $125 an hour. After that, it's $135 an hour. We track those um, our activity by whatever project we're working on. We provide. We will provide the city, just like we provide USDA now, a summary that details all the hours we spent on each individual project, what was done for that project, and provide a, a regular report every time we submit an invoice. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Two questions. Um, my first question is, not all folks know about how leveraging grant works, and I was wondering if you could give an example of how um, how the RCDI grant, for example, leveraged um, the work at the Causeway intersection. Yeah, an outstanding question. So leveraging is really important when you're writing grants for all any folks that have ever been involved in it. Um, so in our case, for example. The city leveraged funds for that project, so a portion of the funds for the project you just referenced, the causeway, come from the city in the form of cash. The city also agreed to provide in-kind services through their Department of Public Works, so in-kind services are provided. And then we applied for grant funds, so we applied for grants from the Northern Border Regional Commission, which uh, approved a $250,000 grant, and then from USDA, which approved a $120,000 grant. So together, those four or five different sources make up the project. And that city financing helped leverage that federal investment. And that's the case in almost every one of the grants that we wrote. Either there was a city contribution, or in some cases, we made a contribution from the USDA through the RCDI grant to leverage other grants. Uh, and so that's how we were able to build off of what the city had available to raise a fairly significant amount of money in terms of grant funds. And as stated, those are the grants that have been approved. There are other fairly large grants that have been written and supported by folks at NCIC and others that are still outstanding. And so there's probably even more uh, that will be done through the work that was done as of September 30th. Now, a lot of grants don't, don't require actual cash cash, just the in-kind services. That no, in-kind can be a match for most of them, uh, but cash is always king. So right. when you can do right. cash, that is always a good leverage point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another question? It, um, so I'm understanding that the White and Burke study is not yet done, but it will be soon? No, I think the, the way it's going to work is that, number one, a lot of things have happened, obviously, since we entered into that agreement. Jay Peak has now oh, been approved well, by, the, by the court for sale. Uh, so that changes things a little bit, hopefully to our advantage. Um, although what it's also done is it's kind of set back the time frame because the receiver's attention is on that sale. Um, so based on our conversations with White and Burke, the timing is probably going to be a little further down the road when it makes more sense in terms of approaching with a land deal of some type. Um, so our the, the work that we've done so far has done some preliminary investigation. It hasn't actually led to a solid recommendation for acquiring the property at this point. Uh, which is what we hope to get to. Uh, and either that will take place in some of the outstanding work yet to be done under this agreement, or the city could continue working with David White and others <clears throat> to get to that point with the other funds that the state has invested. So we're not there yet, but I think we've got the right person on board in David White. I mean, he's got a tremendous amount of experience in this area. He's had a great fondness for Newport. Uh, and I think it's to your advantage to continue to work with him. I think it's some of the work that you, if you really want to see some of the work that he kind of leverages, just go to St. Albans. Oh, yeah. You go to downtown St. Albans and you can see what he basically transformed, helped put all the pieces together to help 
bring the state, public, private, everybody to help revitalize St. Albans. And so that, to me, is a good example of some of his ability to get all the groups to the table and to work on projects. Chris, did you have? Um, no, I guess not at this point, but could I have a copy or is a copy of the document you folks are looking at on the uh, website? Uh, it's not on yet because I didn't know what they were going to do with it. Uh, I but had some after, notes and things. So. Yeah, so after they approve it, I'll get you a copy. Okay, so can I have a copy tonight? You got, put the, Assuming right. they're going to approve it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else? Then we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. You're Mrs. welcome. And thank you for all the work you, you and Karen have been doing. And, and others. <laughs> <at> your, <laughs> others. <laughs> the whole gang. <laughs> the whole gang. Great. Oh, thank you. All right, moving on, Mr. Johnson, new business. Yeah, I do have some. Got here is a request for evaluation change in the 2022 grand list. And this is a result of a error by the Department of Veterans Affairs of the city. They left out uh, the veterans exemption for a taxpayer, which the widow is entitled to, and she wasn't on the list. That's their error. So we need to. Bob is requesting the city vote to allow the exemption to reinstate a forty thousand dollar reduction to the two thousand twenty two grand list to be voted on to reflect the reinstatement of this exemption for Mrs. Carkey. Yeah. You need a motion from the council? Yeah, Bob will do it. Okay. Okay. He was he was on there and they oh, took yeah. him off by mistake. Yeah. He should have been on there. So it's the it's the I mean, in a sense, it's not you who generate no, those. This is the veteran. Veteran affairs. Okay. I was just trying to get an understanding. Okay. So. I'll make the motion. Mr. Vashar makes the made the motion. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Wilson. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Go ahead. Mr. Charbonneau, any new business? Mr. Wilson. No. I have nothing. Uh, I went down to Cotter Beach the other day and saw the new little tree tent campsites and it's pretty awesome down there. I'm looking forward to hanging out down there next year, so good job. I guess I'll wait a minute for the city manager to come back. Copy? Yes. Yeah, I was wondering. Okay, good. Yes. Um, new business. Yes, please. Uh, actually, I think this can go under old business. So I'll wait till old business. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. All right. Um, we'll move on. Mr. Johnson, old business. No. Mr. Charbonneau. No. Mr. Wilson. None. I don't have any. No, any. thank you. Or? Um, I wanted to ask folks to please be aware that a new or relatively new hazard mitigation survey has been posted on our website on the home page if you scroll down to recent news and I'd like to ask folks to, uh, to it's only four very brief questions but if you could please fill that out and I wanted to uh, let folks know that there will be a ribbon cutting of a new parklet at 11 o'clock next Saturday the 24th. Anything else? No, thank no. you. Okay, and with that, the next regularly scheduled city council meeting will be Monday, October 3rd, 2022, 6.30 p.m. here in the council room.